Okay, I'm going to put together a little video solution for question 25. I'm going to work on more of these video solutions, but uh, question 25, we've got Oscar here, and we see a few different pieces of information. So $844 a month and 1114 uh, versus an 1114 max. So first thing is, we know he's thinking of taking CPP early. Well, if you take CPP early, if you really would qualify, for that 844, uh, we knock off 36% from that, and we're going to get $540. So that uh, $540 is what would happen if, and this is the problem here, this is where people get thrown off with this question, if he continues to contribute at the same rate to Canada Pension Plan that he's always contributed at, but that's not what's going to happen. Uh, we can see what's happened with Oscar. If we look at his uh, earnings history, this is what we're going to see. Uh, he, from age 18 to age 25, he had no CPP contributions. So from 18 to 25, okay, no CPP contributions. However, his contributory period still starts there. And then up until age 50, that's when he basically made all of his CPP contributions. And then once he got to age 50, it, he switched over to dividends only. So since age 50, he has now been on dividends only. And you see this with lots of business owners. Once they get to a certain degree of success, they move over to dividends only because it allows them to bypass any sort of Canada pension plan contributions. Now, what that means is that his only CPP premiums were paid from that age 25 to 50. So here he is now at age 58. And the question is, for 58 to 60, is he paying into CPP? And he's not. There's going to be no more CPP contributions here. And because of that, it's going to further drag down his Canada Pension Plan benefit. So the 540 isn't going to apply here. What's actually going to happen uh, is he's going to replace uh, two, or he's going to add two more sort of bad years to his CPP. So when we see that $844, what that's based on, and this is going to be a little bit long, but uh, we know that we take out, so if he's going to be uh, 60, so at age 60, he'll have a 42 year contributory period. And if we take the lowest 17% out, which is what we're supposed to do, we're going to take out uh, six years. Sorry, seven years, I apologize. So seven years come out. Well, that's easy. We take out those university years. So those get all scribbled out here. Those don't count. And we're only going to include what comes after that. So Really, when we, figure, when we figure out how Oscar builds his CPP benefit, it's going to look like this at age 58. And this is what happens here. This is exactly what happens when you get your estimate. The estimate assumes that you're going to continue contributing, not at your current level, but at your average level throughout your lifetime. So Oscar's average level throughout his lifetime is 25 years when he was earning full income. He was earning YMP or more, so that's full points. And then he has eight years at no contributions. So this is what he looks like right now. And that's how we get to his level of estimated CPP benefit. And that's out of a total of 33 years. So his level, he qualifies for 25 33rd of the CPP benefit. So that is 25 30 thirds, and we'll take that times the 1114 
max at age 65 and you get $844. So that's how we get to the 844. But if we look at what's going to happen here by age 60, so now let's extrapolate this out to age 60. Now, honestly, if I were answering this on the exam, once I got to the 540, I would say, well, I know that's not right. I know it's going to be a little bit less than that because two more years of contributions. At that point, I would just guess uh, B, but we'll work through the whole thing. You can see it's a little long here. That's maybe why you don't uh, want to solve it in an exam setting. So if we work through the whole thing, if we go those two more years at zero, which is what's going to happen if we go this way, then he's going to have 25 times one divided by 33, sorry, divided by 35 now. And that's going to be, now the, the reality is a 17% is going to be a tiny bit different in the two scenarios, but it's not material, it's not a big difference. So we take then 25 35 times 1114, and that gets us to 796 dollars. So that would be his benefit at age 60 if he didn't have to worry about any sort of reduction. But of course, we know that if you start at age 60, you're going to have the reduction. So you're going to take 796 dollars minus. 36% for the early CPP. And that's going to get us to $509. And that's how you get 509 there. And that matches up thankfully with answer B. And so we can choose answer B confidently. But like I said, I would have probably guessed, depending on how I was doing for time on the exam, I would have probably just guessed B when I saw that 540 was not the right answer, because I'd say oh, it's pretty close. And I know you're going to chip away at that benefit for those two more years of non contributions. And I know the 839 isn't going to be right. The answer is C839 is going to be right because we're going to have so many more years of non contributions here. And I know that, um, that if he continues working at age 60, the PRB is not optional. PRB is mandatory between 60 and 65 um, on salary income, and you can't make a PRB contribution based on dividend income. So I can really eliminate C and D fairly easily. I hope that helps and enjoy your continued studies.